You guys know I love my audio amplifiers, but sometimes, you know, internally it may be different, but most of the time, high-end audio amplifiers with a quick search on Google verifies that most audio components are square or rectangular boxes, which sometimes just doesn't fit with the aesthetics I'm going for in my home audio space, especially in the high-end audio market. I want to have something that looks nice, but also performs well as well. And today, I have something just like that. So what you see before you is the Gato PWR222 monoblock power amplifiers and Gato is an interesting brand. It's a brand that I've never heard before until they reached out to me to review their monoblock amplifiers. But also, I've learned things about the Gato brand as I had this for about a year now. And yes, I've played around with this Gato monoblocks for nearly a year now. They've been waiting a long, long time for this review. And that's partially because I loved it so much, but also because I wanted to keep trying different things with it, which I'll explain in this video. However, I would like to share some of the things that I learned as I kind of learned to appreciate the brand more and more. And that is the fact that they are made in Denmark in the Gato factory. And so they have the ultimate control over the literal details of the aesthetics as well as the sonic capability of this amplifier. It gives them so-called full control. And that is important because it allows them to do things like this kind of shaped amplifier that is truly outside of the box thinking, pun intended. And as I've alluded to in the beginning of this video, most hi-fi high-end components, even if you go to the highest end, usually comes in the form of a rectangular box, which sometimes is disappointing, but obviously internally they're different and they sound different, which in my opinion, you want something that looks nice, that feels nice, that matches your aesthetics of your house, of your environment, and that is quite important when it comes to high-end audio as well. And Gato wanted to nail all those factors as well as the sound and quality. So in coming up with a form factor like this, I think it goes underappreciated how long and how tedious and how much work goes into designing something so radically different from traditional hi-fi boxes that can be just bought from suppliers with minimal modifications. So kudos to them for making the effort here in designing something radically different. Now, aside from that, the overall build quality is quite exceptional. You can really say that this is crafted rather than made. And that quality is transferred to the back of this unit as well, where nobody sees ever. Um, in the binding post, they are using the next gen binding post by WBT. Not a knockoff version or a similar version, but a genuine one. And that is quite expensive of a binding post to begin with. And of course, you have the balance and RCA in the back, which is great because some companies don't have RCA or they don't have XLR. Here you have both options. Mainly in my system, I have been using it with XLR just because I'm running long lengths of cables, but RC is there if I ever needed to use it as well. And sonically, both seem to be on par with XLR being a little bit quieter than the RCA. In the front, you have a nice circular VU meter, which I'm absolutely a sucker for VU meters, especially nice ones. And they certainly have nailed this one. It looks gorgeous from the seating position that I'm at. And come on, who doesn't like nice dancing VU meters? I think everyone should love VU meters. And I think every audio company should implement, implement one. But anyways, the front is also equipped with two buttons, which keeps things minimal. I mean, it's a power amplifier. You don't want multiple buttons. And this one has two, which is great. One for standby and one to control the display. And of course, the highlight of the show, the top cover of this amplifier, I have it in this nice wood finish, but it comes in multiple different finishes like black piano, uh, whatever, you know, Lamborghini finish, bespoke finish that they have, which I found hilarious that they're able to match this color with a Lamborghini, which is incredible, but also it means that it can match with nearly anything out there. And they have allowed for customers to make their own customized version of the cover, meaning if you have, let's say, a specific finish that you want to match with your speakers or your decorations, your home environment, then 
they will consult with you and they will make a custom fitted top cover for you, which is something that is not offered by a lot of high-end companies. So they're serious about matching that aesthetics. And of course, all of this quality and made in Denmark comes at a price. However, it is far less than one might expect. Looking at the aesthetics of the Getter model blocks, and as someone who has seen a lot of high-end equipment, you would expect a much higher price point with this kind of aesthetic. While it's no small change, just under $10,000 for the pair of the model blocks that you see, I think the quality and the sound that I will describe in a bit is absolutely worth it for the type of quality you're getting here. Inside the cover, which again, I told you that you can interchange it, is a beautiful, beautifully laid out components and also a sign that says twin fed. They go into elaborate details of this technology, the benefits of it in the website as well, which I won't go into in this video because it's way too long, but you can check it in the description below where I will link it for you to read. But just to go over the brief kind of design choice here, the twin fed technology really is just two big capacitors instead of using multiple capacitors or MOSFETs that other companies may use, which according to Gato Audio causes smearing issues and time domain issues as well as multitude of other problems that is fixed with the twin fed design. And of course, we can't forget about the big gigantic toroidal transformers inside this thing. Very high quality, very nice, and all this translates to very high power in this amplifier. The Gato PWR222 is able to push out 250 watts into 8 ohms and 450 watts into 4 ohms. And it is a class AB amplifier, which really translates to, in real life situations, being able to power literally any speakers out there. Mostly, mostly. There's some exceptions, but I haven't come into those exceptions, so I have to only say, with everything I have tried, it was able to phenomenally power and control the speakers in my room. And that was the Bacard S400 Mark II and the Tecton Lore BE version, the Q Acoustic Concept 50 speakers, the CSS Audio and of course myself, Typhon loudspeakers, as well as the Orendo 1723 THX loudspeakers which all of them were driven phenomenally, which isn't much of a surprise because none of these speakers are technically too difficult to drive. I think the Picard S400 Mark II was the only speaker that truly required that kind of power to come alive. But with the rest of the speakers, it was nuanced, it was very controlled, and had no problems with volume or getting loud whatsoever. And that goes the same for the Picard S400 Mark II, which Yes, it required a little bit more power and seemed like I needed to increase the volume a little more than the other speakers, but man, it was able to control those Bacard S400 Mark IIs without any problems whatsoever. Another speaker that I tried to kind of help establish that this is an amplifier that can drive hard to drive speakers was the Kev LS50 Meta speakers, which is notoriously known for being hard to drive on some cases, or at least to sound great in these high powered amplifiers behind it. And the PWR222 was absolutely phenomenal in driving the Kef LS50 Metas with crisp and clear details, nuances, sound staging, detail, imaging, and perhaps one of the most impactful bass I've heard out of the Kef LS50 Metas. And that says a lot because I've had the Kef LS50 Metas and the original Kef LS50s many, many times. And I don't think there was a long period of time in between where I didn't own a Kef LS50 version of it. And in those times, I've heard many, many different amplifiers with the Kef LS50 Metals and the Kef LS50 Originals. And so that's why I say it's a pretty darn big statement for me to make that it was one of the most impactful sound that I've heard from the Kef LS50 Metals when powered with the Gato model blocks here. As for preamplifiers, which is important when it comes to any amplifier choices, you want to have the right preamplifier and DAC. Um, in my case, I found great success, and I mean amazing sound quality with the Audio Note preamplifier made it with the Gato model blocks. I've also tried Denafrips Athena, the top of the line preamplifier from Denafrips, as well as their middle child, the Hades preamplifier. It sounded more thinner, more quicker, more detailed, more uh, snappier. While with Audio Note components, it sounded more full bloom, more warmer toned, and more enveloping and more soundstage as if the room was filled with music. 
And of course, the iFi Pro iCan that I recently reviewed, and I tried all settings from solid state to tube to tube plus settings with the Yaddo model blocks. And I found great success with all of them. They all sounded good in their own ways. So with the iFi, yes, there's less bass extension to be had than full size preamplifiers with the Yaddo model blocks, but I also found that depending on the setting, you're getting a lot more nuance and detail in comparison to the other full size preamplifiers that I've tried. By far, my favorite was the audio note preamplifier personally for me because it was the most musical sounding. I don't really look for details and stuff like that. I look, at, look for the overall presentations when I'm listening to music and by far the audio note preamplifier or a quality preamplifier with tube circuitry was really the way to go with the Gato monoblox. And of course Gato makes their own preamplifier as well meant to be made it with the monoblox here, which I haven't tried and I haven't requested it why didn't I? Maybe one day. Now, in terms of the overall sound signature of the Gato monoblock, I find it quite neutral and nothing stands out. And that could be a good thing. Now, often than not, neutral amplifiers to me can be boring. Meaning, if it's too neutral, nothing stands out, then, well, off it goes because there are plenty of amplifiers out there with character, with mid-range tonality that I look for, or high frequency sparkle, or really bombastic, really, you know, grippy textured bass, whatever it may be, something stands out that defines the same sound signature and the characteristics of the brand. In this case, with Gato Monoblocks, I found that the sound was neutral, yet it was keep captivating me to listen more to my music and go through all the catalogs in my playlist. And I wondered why. And as I listened more and more and decided to play with multiple different components and speakers, I realized that while it's neutral, it's not a boring amplifier because of the nuances it provides. It does neutrality to perfection. So let's start off with the bass. The bass is quick, it's dynamic, it is snappy, it is controlled, and it's like a piston. And while it may not be the end game in terms of extension and really allowing the speaker to express in the lower, lower frequencies, it is able to really captivate you in that mid-bass texture and mid-bass punch that is really, really chest pounding and allows the speaker to really breathe and really express itself in the bass regions. With the mid-range, the mid-range is neutral, it's clean, and sometimes I felt that it was a little bit too clean for my liking, especially with the Hades or the Athena preamplifier from Denafrips. But with tube preamplifiers like the audio note, the sound takes a drastic turn where the sound becomes fuller, it becomes more fleshed out in the mid ranges, and you can hear all the nuances and details like you did with the solid state, but in a more fuller, more fleshed out version. And that's why I like the tube preamplifier matching with the Gato monoblocks very much, because it was a perfect balance between being lean and detailed and being fleshed out and warm and inviting and room filling sound. Overall, I had no complaints with the mid range's tonality. The way it portrayed itself, especially with two preamplifiers, everything sounded so, so darn good and on point with beautiful vocals and beautiful on point imaging and detail separation. And I think one thing that stands out that I truly appreciated about the Gato monoblocks on the long term use was how quiet and how nuanced the mid range was to where I can hear all the details, the lips, you know, as if you know, I'm able to feel what's going on rather than just hearing it. So it has really good attention to detail, much like the designs adjust. In the high frequencies, it's the highlight. I think if anything stands out, and I know I said that everything is very balanced, but if anything stands out, it is the detail, it is the nuance on this amplifier. It's very quick, it's very snappy. But that's not to say that it stands out in terms of frequency, meaning it's not bright, it's not tilted up, it's pretty neutral in the, and balanced in the high frequency. But what stands out is the separation. It's the ability of the amplifier to really layer the sound so that the sound, if I'm hearing a trumpet behind a sax, you know, saxophone, then I can hear that trumpet behind the saxophone. And when I'm hearing a guitar to my left, I'm hearing the guitar to my left and I know the position of that guitar very precisely and it helps the speaker, obviously it depends on the capability of the speaker as well, but if your speaker is capable, it really helps that imagery come to life. And that is what this amplifier is really good at is the nuances, the snappiness, the attack, the quietness. There's no lingering in the high frequency. There's no ringing. There's just snap and done. 
And I have to say that I truly appreciated long-term listening sessions with this amplifier and that is quite rare for a amplifier that is nuanced, detailed on the top end because oftentimes and not, I'm listening for hours on end to review gear and if it's, I love detail, I love nuances, but if it's too much on the long-term listening sessions, it gets ear fatiguing. With the Gyaro monoblocks, I didn't find any ear fatigue whatsoever and I found that to be the case because it's well layered, well laid out in the sound stage so that nothing seems crammed and shouting at you. And perhaps because of its low noise floor, but I found that the sound was very, very good at low quiet volumes as well. Often many amplifiers that come in here, and that's not to say that those are not good amplifiers, but at low volumes, it struggles. And while high powered amplifiers tend to do really great with high volumes or even medium volumes, um, at times I find that the low volume can be lacking. And I think that's where the Gyaro monoblocks really shines because you can hear those nuances, you can hear those best uh, bass textures and mid-range beauty without having to crank up the volume too much. It is very good at those nuances wherever the volume is set. Now the quality of the music matters with the Gyaro monoblocks. In terms of the overall sound, it's going for the nuance, the detail, being able to really take advantage of all the details in the recording is great when the recording is well mastered and mixed or mixed and mastered. So in this case, for me, I found that the recordings that I knew that was recorded well when I played them, they surprised me because it sounded very, very good, very nuanced, very layered, like I talked about in the sound section of this video. And some poor recordings were not bad, but some poor recordings were just totally destroyed. I could hear all the artifacts, all the uh, non-wanted things that I didn't know existed in the music before, for example, was shown. And that is something that you're going to face with the Gyaro monoblocks. This is a highly detailed, highly nuanced, highly impactful kind of amplifier that draws every last bit from the music. While the Gyato monoblocks I find is the most neutral in comparison to the Burson monoblocks that I reviewed, which has more exaggeration in the bass region, in the mid-bass region, as well as some frequencies to kind of give character, as well as some name components or Bryston components that you may see. There are many amplifiers that kind of exaggerate a little bit in the top frequency or otherwise to kind of give that emphasis and give that character to really kind of impress you. But I find that while the Gyaro monoblocks are the most neutral out of all of them, I still find that the Gyaro monoblocks is one of those amplifiers that draws every last bit of detailed information and nuances from the music. So that comes with a price. It is very, very good with well-recorded music, but it is not the best. And I'm surprised that it's not the worst with poor recordings. It is acceptable with poor recordings, but it is just not going to sound like a tube amplifier where it masks those not very well recorded music pieces. Now you may notice that I didn't comment too much on sound staging as well as imaging. And that's gonna be highly variant on the pre-amplifier you use as well as the speakers. I've heard the Gato model blocks with many different speakers and components to where sometimes it is going to be a wide sound stage really enveloping, like for example, you guessed it, with a tube pre-amplifier. But with a solid state amplifier, you're gonna get a limited sound staging, which is still pretty large in, in width and depth in comparison to a lot of the solid state amplifiers in this price range. But also at the same time, I find that in terms of comparison with a tube preamplifier matching, it is going to be limited and it's going to be very pinpoint and accurate and layered within that sound stage. So you never lose that layering capability of the Gato monoblocks, which seem to be inherently in the design itself. But at the same time, you're gonna be left with a multiple different choice of preamplifiers to choose from to really maximize what you want out of the Gato monoblocks. Remember, this is a highly neutral sounding, highly resolving pair of monoblock amplifiers. So therefore, whatever you plug in is going to be reflected upon your system. So that's why I think the preamplifier choice is vital to really kind of nailing down what kind of sound staging, imaging, or the overall musicality of the sound that you want. And I think that, uh, no, for me, a tube preamplifier like the audio note was the perfect match, while others may prefer a more neutral or maybe a little bit more brilliant sounding preamplifier that is solid state based. So with that being said, if this video was helpful to you, please click the like button. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps my channel out tremendously. And thank you in advance. 
And also make sure to subscribe for future videos just like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one.